What up, Yu-Gi-Oh! players? Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. I am your host, the RJB0, and today I'm going to be starting off the discussion by talking about one of the most questioned and misunderstood concepts in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm going to get a little bit existential and philosophical on you guys. Then I'm going to move on to a Business Casual deck review of Black Wings, and then I'm going to finish off the video with a discussion of one of the things that you guys should look out for the most when you are trying to make money off the game, or just in general. I think this is going to be something that you guys should look out for, whether or not you are trying to profit off the game, and it's something that you can find in Lord of Tachyon Galaxy, so stick around. So, every once in a while I go on DN, and I realize there's like tons of dev pro lovers and people who hate DN, whatever. I don't care about that debate. I have no good logic behind using DN over dev pro, besides I guess I'm lazy and I've got a Mac. But... I go on DN, and I see on the unrated advanced section this wall of people hosting whose dual note says something like fun decks only, or fun duel, what or whatever, and I just said, you know what, I, I, I like fun duels, why not? So I click on, like, my Agent deck, or my Machina Mash deck, or my Chain Beat deck, all of which are things that I consider to be fun decks, and either they quit as soon as they see what deck I'm playing, or it slowly begins to dawn on me. I don't know if this is your experience, but this is definitely mine, that these people who host under fun duels or fun decks only are not only like the slowest acceptors in the world, but they seem to think that the definition of a fun deck is something stupid and bad. And... Although I like stupid and crazy as much as the next person, maybe even more so, as many of you guys who have seen my other videos would know, um, I kind of wonder a lot if there's that's really all there is to fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really don't think it is. I think that there is much more to fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! than just crazy and stupid stuff. So, I've been thinking about this, and I realized that there are a few different kind of ways that you can have fun with Yu-Gi-Oh! or that a deck can be fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, the first way is, of course, like I said, um, being crazy and stupid. Being crazy and stupid is always fun. Um, playing decks that are just absolutely ridiculous, like my stupid decks of the month, are always going to be ridiculous and will have very little point uh, other than to just be entertaining and trollsy. And you also create dumb events, like war duels are hilarious sometimes. And then there's the pimps versus hoes duel that I did with back when I was running the Hobo League channel. And, you know, crazy and fun, or, or stupid, is quite a bit of fun. But other than that, there are a couple of other definitions of fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and ways that people have fun. The first definition that I find of fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! is skill. I think that skill has a lot to do with having fun in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and, and that works in a couple of ways. The first is if there's a massive disparity in the skill of two players, neither player is going to have fun. You find that the person who is less good than the person than the other person is going to be, you know, beaten all the time, and they're not going to be having fun because they're constantly losing, and the other player just isn't getting enough of a challenge. However, if the two players are almost equally matched, it's almost always going to be a relatively fun duel, or a relatively engaging duel, at least, unless they're using something stupid like Exodia or Final Countdown or whatever. Um, for instance, um, my first year at KomoriCon, um, I've been doing the KomoriCon tournaments, the KomoriCon Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments for years now. Um, the first time I went to KomoriCon, I... This was back when I was a terrible player. I brought, like, some god-awful, like, fire ultimate baseball kid th deck thing. And I thought I was the greatest player in the world. And I played against this guy who was very good, who just wiped the floor with me. And I didn't have much fun that year. I found, found myself a lot uh, very frustrated in that tournament because I just kept getting beaten over and over and over again. Um, and the next year... I had been playing the entire year, messing around with some of my friends with, with different decks, and I had grown into a much better player. I went to the tournament, I played against the same guy in the final, in the top four, and I had one of the most fun duels of my life, because we were almost perfectly equally matched. I ended up losing, but it was, it was 
just a great experience. So I think that having an equality of skill and having the two players be actually challenging each other really ups the fun in a game. The other way that skill really factors into fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! is if a deck is more skillful, oftentimes it's more engaging to play. Um, and when I say engaging, I just mean that you're like really into the game. When a deck is more skillful, it means that there's a lot more thought process going into your plays. It means you can't just like play the deck and the deck kind of plays itself. There isn't like a dominant strategy or whatever that you're always using just over and over again. And since you aren't letting the deck play for you, you have to really be more into the game. And I think that that makes the game a lot more fun. That's one of the reasons why I absolutely love Chain B is because there's so much thought that goes into each play and each response to your opponent's plays. you got to really be into the game in order to play that deck. I think that makes a game a, a lot of fun. The final way that a deck can be fun, and this is probably the way I have most fun in Yu-Gi-Oh!, is when there are just a lot of options for your plays. Once again, when you don't really have an autopilot deck that has this one dominant strategy, when you've just got this array of options that allows the player to, you know, decide how they want to run their turn and not just, like, in what order to play the same combo, but in, you know, what different combos you can work with. It's one of the reasons why I really love Agents. There are just a ton of things you can do with your hand each turn, and it's really up to players' decisions. And it's the reason why I think that of all the top-tier decks of all time, Debris Hime and Junk Doppel were the two most fun to play ever because you just always had tons of options, and it was up to the player to decide what they wanted to do when, and that was really engaging. So, I guess that the, these definitions of fun in Yu-Gi-Oh!, although they are very comprehensive, they, they don't really cover everything, because in the end, Black Wings don't really fit under any of these categories, and yet I still felt like I was really enjoying myself this week, when I was playing them for this deck review that I'm about to do now. So, first off, what did I really like about Black Wings? Well, like I just said, it's kind of difficult for me to tell what I liked about Black Wings so much. It may be the kind of easygoing, kind of go-with-the-flow play style, which I, which I really liked, whereby if one of your plays doesn't work out, you aren't really dead in the water. There's almost always something you can do with it next. So you didn't ever find yourself in a particular in a, an absolutely dead situation where there was absolutely no play that you can make. I really liked that, and I think that there's something else about it that really makes people like really loyal to that deck. Because if you look at a Blackwing player, they are a Blackwing player for all time. They seem to just be incredibly loyal to the deck, and somehow I kind of understand that now. Even though I don't really know why it is that people love that deck so much, I, I kind of understand how it works. As far as co competitiveness, I think that Black Wings are very good, particularly after today when Kalut goes up to three, and especially when Graham, the level five synchro, comes out. Because when Graham is out, you can summon that uh, you can summon your Shura, and you are if your play goes through with Shura, if you successfully run over an opponent's monster, you are guaranteed one level 5 synchro, and then a second level 5 synchro. So you synchro with that Vayu that you summon from your deck, or you can also synchro for 7 with your Gale that you summon from the deck, and then you can remove from play the Shura and the Vayu for a second level 5 synchro, that, that Gram, and if you really need to, you can go into one of those rank 5 Xyz, and you can just make tons of plays off of that. So it's the deck's got a ton of utility, especially after Graham comes out and you can use Vayu again to a greater extent. Um, the deck you also really utilizes its searchability using um, using a Shura and and Whirlwind. So the deck is very toolboxable. So once again, you almost never run out of plays. Uh, the weakness of Black Wings, I suppose, is that if a deck can outspeed Black Wings, it can almost always outplay them. And that is what brings me to the tech of the week. This week, I looked at Mega Capital G's deck profile for Black Wings, and I realized how that worked, and it didn't use Vayu, which I understand because Gram isn't out, which means that Vayu isn't always the best play you can make. Um, and he used Skill Drain. 
And I thought, that's interesting, that you would use Skill Drain in Blackwings. And then I realized more and more how good Skill Drain is as a tech for Blackwings, because it slows down opponent's decks, and if you are using a Vayu build especially, you don't care about effects. You can about the fact that you can spam synchros. And that's very good. And once you get a field established in Black Wings, and you've got those Kalutes in hand, and you've got, you know, big monsters on the board, you don't need your effects. You can just live off of spell and trap cards, and your Kalutes, and other hand traps. So Skill Drain is an amazing tech in Black Wings, and I am really looking forward to when Graham comes out, and I think that I am going to hold on to the Black Wings I have and maybe try to make the deck. I highly recommend it for business casual players. I think that it isn't as skillful as it could be. I know that a lot of people make fun of Black Wings for being kind of skillless, um, but I think that since they had been nerfed by the, by the format in which they were tier zero, basically, in Japan, they have actually become a lot more skillful than they used to be. So that's what I think of Black Wings. I think that you guys should definitely try it out if you haven't already. Um, so I promised you guys that I would help you make some money off of Yu-Gi-Oh! I know that I've done my yu gi 101 uh, series that I think you guys should check out. It's a little bit heavy on the economic details and stuff like that, but I think that it, in the end, the things that it teaches you will be pretty helpful to your, um, to your making money off of Yu-Gi-Oh! and building up a trade binder. In this case, I want to talk about an interesting phenomenon that I think is people just kind of look over, and I don't understand how people keep looking over this, which is the biggest buzz phrase in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Interesting card. I think this is an interesting card I think, you know, I, I kind of like this card, but I don't think, I don't know if people, if other people are running this card yet. These are the phrases that you should be looking out for in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because those were things that big yu gi tubers and good players were talking about having to do with Giga Brilliant back when it was like a $7 card before it became a $20 card. That's what people were saying about Big Eye back when it was $10. That's what people were saying about Invoker back when it was like $5. And that's what people are still saying about things like Xyz Reborn, which I think is going to be absolutely and spectacularly abusable sometime in the future. You have to look out for that because almost always when somebody... When people are saying this is an interesting card, I think this is this could be a good card in the future. It's not really that good right now, and not a lot of people are playing it, but I kind of like it. Those are the kinds of things you should look out for. That was things that some something that people were saying about Draw and Lockbird, and now it's a $10 rare. It's a little bit overhyped in my opinion, but really, I think that if you want to start making money off of this game, one of the things you really have to do is look out for those cards where people are saying, this is an interesting card, but, or this is an interesting card, I want to, you should look out for this card, even or especially when it's very, very low in value. And I think that this is what brings us to the value of Lord of Tachyon Galaxy. There are a ton of cards like that in Lord of Tachyon Galaxy. King Feral Imp, Pinpoint Guard, that one guy, the, the gauntlet shooter that can just destroy a card on the field. I think Rank Up Magic Baryon's Force could be abusable in the future if they come out with something, you know, really spectacular with it. There are a ton of cards in Lord of Tachyon Galaxy that are interesting cards. They look like they could be very good at some point. I especially want to point out Pinpoint Guard because that card is just like setting off alarm bells in my head. You can special summon a level four or lower monster from your graveyard. It doesn't negate that monster's effect, which is interesting because most cards like that do. This one doesn't, and then it can't be destroyed for the rest of that turn. I'm thinking Stratos abuse here. So look out for Lord of Tachyon Galaxy and these cards that people are going to be saying, ah, this is kind of an interesting card, but not very many people are playing it. And those cards that are low in value now, but you think have potential because those are always the ones that end up being like $70. So that's my show for today. Please remember to check out my contest if you have not already subscribed to me because it isn't until I get 100 subscribers that I can start giving away those special editions. And if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button and remember to 
subscribe if you haven't already. And this is the RJBZR once again starting up his computer again to some.